So then, it's happened. Michael Masi has been removed from his position as FIA's Formula 1 race director, a move that some would say has come far too late. But it has to be said that we should cut Masi a little bit of slack. He was thrust into this job after the sudden death of Charlie Whiting back in 2019, and he's been conducting this job under high pressure with very little training. But despite all this, the FIA's investigation has confirmed that in the final few moments of the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix in 2021, Mazzi failed to observe protocol that directly influenced the outcome of the World Championship. And while there is no proof to suggest that it was done for Netflix or Drive to Survive or just create drama for that final lap, the point remains, the rules were not properly observed or implemented or followed. Yeah, I'm having one of those days. Basically, under the rules, what should have happened is that when the lapped cars were allowed to pass and retake their positions after getting their lap back, it should have been every single one of those lapped cars, and not just the ones in between Hamilton and Verstappen, which meant that drivers such as Sainz had to overtake lapped cars to be within a sniff of Verstappen's back end. And on top of that, as the lap cars overtook Hamilton of a stap and then went round to take their positions where they should have been and therefore be back on the lead lap, the whole process should have taken a lot longer. So in reality, that final lap that we saw where Verstappen overtook Hamilton to take the win and therefore the World Championship shouldn't have happened. What should have happened is there would have either have been a finish under the safety car or just that little sprint between the safety car line and the finish line. And at the Eiffel Grand Prix in 2020, Red Bull had queried this exact thing. For Mazzi to say to them, and there is an audio recording of this, all cars must unlap, or words to that effect. So if the protocols had been observed properly and the rules applied as they should have been, Hamilton is the world champion. And as the fallout from all of this is showing, Verstappen is world champion because Michael Masi failed to apply the rules in the correct manner. And this isn't a whine or saying that Hamilton is an eight-time champion or that Verstappen is a no-time champion and has a little asterisk next to his name. It's got nothing to do with that. This is straight up facts. What this then does is it makes the sport look bad. Like, really, really bad. And while Toto's infamous No Mikey This Isn't Right has become a certified meme, well, Toto was right. It wasn't right. It also looks bad when Mercedes and Red Bull are arguing their case to the race director, and the race director then sides with one team over another. In this instance, Mazzi should have just had the balls to stand up to Toto and to whoever it was at Red Bull. I can't remember if it was... Christian Horner or Max's race engineer and just said go away and let me do my job. Which is odd considering earlier in that same race when Red Bull was whining about the fact that Hamilton had got away with overtaking off track, Mazzi had said to Red Bull the decision's been made, deal with it. And this has got nothing to do with who I follow or who other people follow or you know who I wanted to win or anything like that. I mean it was one of the cars I support that brought out that safety car in the first place. However, there is precedent for a championship ending and being decided under a safety car. 2012. That season finished under the safety car, Vettel won the championship and that led to Alonso having that famous death stare at Interlagos. Let it also be known that this has got nothing to do with Hamilton being a sore loser, or Toto being a sore loser, or Mercedes not being able to handle it, because I want you to imagine something here. Imagine if it had been the other way around. You can guarantee that the Orange Army would be screaming their heads off over it was rigged because they needed Hamilton to beat Schumacher's record, it was rigged because Hamilton's British, Hamilton has the best amount of luck, and things like that, and, you know, Silverstone would still be trending on Twitter even now. I even joked about how it was Garak that rigged it in a parody of In the Pale Moonlight from Star Trek Deep Space Nine that I'll pop in right at the end of this video as a little bit of fun in this otherwise serious topic. What it's about, to get back to the point of the video, is sporting integrity. And that is what Formula One is. It's a sport. It's a sport that's increasingly trying to use more and more and more drama to try and make it more biased in entertainment more than sport if you can follow what i'm saying here and it's something i've talked about at length before a few times you know the wwf1 comments that were left by myself by other williams fans by mclaren fans even by ferrari fans and alfa romeo fans at the end of last season you know with the whole drama being constantly peddled and worked up and then being repeated and spewed out by the media to try and make f1 this well 
soap opera or even sports entertainment like you see in WWE wrestling and things like that. And you can now see why people are going, it's becoming like the WWE. It's also about how the referee, Michael Masi in this case, well, used to be in this case, needs to apply the rules and just get on with his job and not be influenced by you know, staff members at certain teams or even by the drivers. Let me use a football analogy here. In the 1999 Champions League final, Bayern Munich were leading Manchester United 1-0 until the 90th minute. But in stoppage time, United scored two goals within as many minutes to win the competition. That's the equivalent of Brazil 2008. Now imagine if that game had ended 1-0 and Bayern Munich had won the championship. Bayern Munich was the better team on that day and won the game and therefore won the Champions League in 1999. But instead of declaring the game over after those 90 minutes, the referee decided he was going to play the extra 30 minutes of extra time, which is what the game would go to if the game had finished a draw and then almost the penalties. But instead of playing the extra time normally with Bayern Munich with that one goal advantage, the referee had given Manchester United a goal. And on top of this, he'd said that the extra time period was going to be golden goal. Basically, next goal wins. Then after about 5 or 10 minutes of that extra time, Manchester United score, and then Manchester United are declared the winners. That is Abu Dhabi 2021. And it wasn't just Mercedes who were a bit confused, if not annoyed, by what happened in the final moments of that race. Ricardo, Sainz, Norris, Russell, even Alonso, who has no reason to like Hamilton, said it wasn't right. And by removing Mazzi, it's almost a silent admission by the FIA that the whole thing influenced the outcome of the championship. Now, I'm not saying it was outright rigged in Verstappen's favour or made so it looked good on television, but the whole thing was still influenced to the point where it looked rigged for TV, if you can understand my thinking here. And the, it's called motor racing remark, also isn't a good look. But even though the FIA has basically come out and said, yeah, Mazzi fucked it up and you know the outcome was influenced in such a way that the driver that probably wasn't going to win that race won the race and the championship, there's nothing that can be done. The results have been finalised. There is no way of changing the results. Verstappen is champion, even though the way he won it wasn't exactly above board. But it wasn't his fault. It was Mazzi's fault. Be angry at Mazzi, not at Max. So what's being done then? Well, Mazzi is being replaced by Niels Wittig, who is the former DTM race director, and also Eduardo Fritas, who is the WEC's race director. And I've heard that Fritas is a man who has a very good record of applying rules to the letter, and is also a man with a very low tolerance to bullshit. But what's odd here is that they're going to be alternating the job, or at least doing it on a rotational basis, whether that's one-on-one -on -one off or two-on-two -two off or whatever, they haven't actually confirmed. But to help them in their new role as the race directors, the FIA is going to bring in another panel of adjudicators who are basically going to act a bit like VAR in football. So they're going to use all the latest technology to analyse things and, and stuff like that. And they're also banning direct communication between the pit wall and the steward's office, or at least the race director's office. But teams are still gonna be able to ask things like, is he allowed to do that? Or why have we been penalized for this infraction? Or whatever it may be, but still the way they phrase the questions and things like that has to be done in a certain manner. In the report, it does state that Mazzi was probably influenced and pressured into a decision by Red Bull and Mercedes lobbying like they did. And in that split second, he had to make a decision. He favored Red Bull. And by favored, I don't mean he you know, liked Red Bull more and he liked Verstappen more, so he rigged it in favour of Red Bull and Verstappen. But it was the decision he made in that split second that he had to make the decision that favoured Red Bull, if you can see where I'm coming from. And that might have been the weakness of him. The best referees in other sports are the ones who do their job, apply the rules to the letter, and stand up to the players when they try to lobby for a decision in their favour. The sort of referees I'm talking about here are guys like the football referee, the Italian football referee and lead baddie from Mars Attacks, Pierre Luigi Colina, and also rugby's Nigel Owens from Wales. They had the respect of the players on the pitch. They had the respect of the players' managers and also the staff within the teams that these players play for. And they also have the respect of the fans. They also did their jobs as prescribed by the rule book. and in addition to this, if a group of players tried to lobby for a decision in their favour, like a free kick or a penalty or whatever it may be, Kalina and Owens had the balls to stand there and say, go away. 
And if what's been said about Freetas is true, then Freetas is probably a great replacement for Mazzy. Probably should have been the guy they called up in the first place. And they've changed the safety car procedures as well, but a final confirmation on what those procedures will be will be released just prior to the first race of the season. While the new teams, and by new teams I mean like that VAR system and also the new race directors, they'll be in place for testing in Barcelona. But you know, I can't say I'm surprised this has happened. The fallout and noise after that final race in Abu Dhabi was probably too much for the FIA to ignore. But being typical FIA, they need suitably embarrassing before they'll actually change something. Things like the 1973 Dutch Grand Prix, the 1994 San Marino Grand Prix, and now obviously the 2021 Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. Is it about keeping Hamilton quiet or at least in the sport? No, not at all. They've got another star attraction if he did walk away, so I doubt that's much of a concern. But as long as next year is less WWE and more Formula 1, I'm not really bothered. So then, a look at the Michael Masi situation, him losing his job as the FIA Formula 1 race director, and why they came to the decision that they did. If you've liked this video, then obviously give it a like, and if you have your own thoughts on the situation, leave them down in the designated comment submission zone and get a discussion going, but please be civil. I don't want to have to keep deleting comments because Hamilton was robbed or ha ha Hamilton lost, Hamilton lost, ha ha Mac Max, Super Mac Max. Right, I'm going to be deleting comments from both sides so yeah, just be civil please. Grow up. Massive thanks as ever go out to the good folk of Patreon for their continued support and if you want to join them in supporting me on a more personal level you can do so by following the link in the description where there will also be links to Discord and also to my socials. So until next time, I've been Aidan Millward. Have a great day wherever you live in the world. I'll see you all again soon for another video. So until then, goodbye. You caused that crash at turn 14. That's right. You knew that Williams was not going to score any points. You just wanted to get Latifi out of the way so you could bring out the safety car. It wasn't quite that simple. I had hopes the car would crash at that corner, but I suspected that Latifi wasn't quite up to the task. And what about Giovinazzi? Did you cripple his car too? Think of it as just racing. And if you allow your anger to subside for a moment, you'll see that this all looks totally above board. Verstappen will still win the title. But there's no guarantee of that because there's still only a few laps left. Oh, but I think that there is. When the safety car comes out, Max will be able to pit for tyres and still get track position. Because Perez held Hamilton up just enough for that to be allowed to happen. And because of where Latifi crashed, there will just be enough time for one lap. And then the whole world will see it was set up for Netflix. Oh, but I don't think that they will. Because any imperfections in the rule book can be put down to a loophole allowing these things to happen. It says any lapped cars, not all. So, with a seemingly legitimate crash in one hand and a rule book full of holes in the other, I ask you, Michael, what conclusions would you draw? that Latifi crashed trying to overtake Schumacher offline and there's a technicality in the rule book that allows only the lap cars between Lewis and Max to pass for a one lap sprint. Precisely. And the more Toto says that this is not right, the more Christian Horner will thank you because it is exactly what Christian Horner would be doing in this position. That's why you came to me, isn't it, Michael? Because you knew that I could do those things that you weren't capable of doing. Well, it worked. And everybody will get what they want. A one-lap sprint for a new world champion. And if your conscience is bothering you, you should soothe it with the knowledge that this will put Formula One on the back pages of every newspaper in the world. And all it took was one Canadian pay driver, one seven-time champion, and the self-respect of one FIA race director. I don't know about you, but I called that a bargain.